Support comes from PCC Community Markets, celebrating summer in the Northwest with organic blueberries locally grown by two family farms and hand-picked at the peak of season with 15 neighborhood locations. More at PCCMarkets.com. Hey, good morning. It's Patricia Murphy. It's Wednesday. This is Seattle Now. After more than a year without live music, you could say people are ready to see shows again. Have you heard of the band before, or are you just like... No. I don't even know what kind of music they do. I have no idea who they are. I'm just like, you most band, drinking, club, done. <laughs> KUOW's Casey Martin has our report from Capitol Hill. But first, let's get you caught up. Firefighters are battling blazes in north, central, and eastern Washington. The record-breaking heat and looming drought are making for extremely dangerous conditions. Now Governor Inslee is taking action. Inslee declared a wildfire emergency and statewide burn ban yesterday. That means your campfires are probably not allowed. Gas stoves and recreational campfires on private property are okay. The burn ban goes through the end of September and could be extended. Meanwhile, the weather might have cooled off, but it is bone dry here. It's been more than three weeks with little to no rain in Seattle. National Weather Service says maybe a little drizzle today and a little cooler and cloudy for the next two days. After that, you can copy paste the same 80 degree sunny day and you'll get our forecast for the next week. And here is your annual reminder that if you see an adorable seal pup on a beach around the city, leave that baby alone. It's pupping season, and seal moms will sometimes leave their babies on the shore while they go about their business. Just don't get involved, because you could scare off the moms. That means no selfies or TikToks. I know it's hard. If your gut tells you something's wrong and a pup might need help, call the seal sitter's hotline, and a volunteer will come check it out. Yo, yo. What's up? Oh, yeah. So shows are back. Let's give it up for shows. <laughs> like, um, I'm Slow Shutter. I'm Washington show State Bridge is Bridge. open for business, and that means live music events are popping up all over the place. KUOW reporter Casey Martin went out on assignment for Seattle Now. Casey, you attended a sold-out show at Barboza on Capitol Hill last Thursday, one of the first club shows post-reopening. This was a long time in the making, man. Did people turn out? People did turn out. It was so wild to see lines, actual lines of people pressed together, waiting outside, waiting to get into the club. And this was one of the first shows that we could find that was full capacity, so wide open to folks, and people could be unmasked. So this was kind of, you know, as close to pre-pandemic as we could get, uh, you know, for the first time in over a year. Wow. Okay. What was the mood like? Because I could see wanting to go out, but I don't know how I would feel once I got there. You know, that that was kind of the mood. People were very, very excited, a little nervous at first because this was the first thing that people were really allowing themselves to go out and do. But you could feel this kind of energy in the air that it was almost like a holiday. or People were kind of dressed up and feeling excited. Uh, I talked to uh, Izzy McCubbin and Roya Salishore, and this was their first show in over a year. Uh, I'm feeling very excited, happy, a little bit nervous, like don't know what it's going to be like. Like, are people going to walk in and wear masks still? Like, are people just going to be like all next to you or something? (laughs) So it's all a lot of emotions, but. Yeah, I feel the same way, like super excited, like just get back to normal. That's what I want. I miss going out. I miss dancing and listening to live music. So really pumped for tonight. I've been waiting for this all day. Now, Casey, obviously the music was the reason people came out, but we are actually still in a pandemic here. And I am curious about how the COVID kit went. How were people behaving? (laughs) Yeah, the COVID kit was was eye opening. So, you know, here in Seattle, people are still, you know, wearing masks inside and, you know, still outside. You still see some sort of social distancing. Not any of that at the show whatsoever. This was all brand new. So the first thing right outside that was new for me, at least, was, you know, people are showing up to the club with their ID, their license, right? And also proof of vaccination. So people are whipping out their cards or, you know, like pulling it up on their phone. And this was like, oh, this kind of looks like the future. This is what things are going to be like going forward. Uh, And it was no big deal. Everybody pulled out their card or like they pulled out their phone. 
And then once they got in, no masks anywhere. I thought people would have masks, <gasps> yeah, around their, you know, around their necks or you know, know, hanging with them. Some of the staff were masked up, but uh, this this was all completely new. You know, grocery stores, you know, were still wearing masks. Down in that basement nightclub, not a mask anywhere. Wow. So people were comfortable. People were comfortable and people were kind of, you know, craving that. People were looking for, you know, being pressed up against each other, being packed in, you know, like sardines. And that's what everybody told me. They said, you know, I'm vaccinated. Everybody I know is vaccinated. And man, I want this. I want to be out here. Uh, I did see one person in the crowd and I had to beeline it through the crowd to go and talk to her. Uh, Lydia Sprague was the one person I found wearing a mask in the crowd. (laughs) I'm excited, but apprehensive. It's the first time I've been in a room with so many people with no mask on. I kind of feel like a big dork, though, because everybody else is without a mask. I would have been next to her. I would have been (laughs) next to her. Casey, any moments in the club that made you think, ugh? Because I know I had an experience recently at a water park where it was just a little too much, a little too close. Did you have that moment? It was hot breath on my neck because, you know, that was new and I was trying to keep in my space. You know, I'm kind of, you know, keeping a a couple of feet around me and kind of keeping a little bubble. And that was a moment I was just hyper aware. I could feel somebody was telling a story and every time they were accenting their S's, there was a lot of a lot of spittle on the back of my neck. (laughs) And that was something that, you know, pre-pandemic is not great. But, you know, post-pandemic, I'm trying to just like, it's fine. He's vaccinated. I'm vaccinated. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, But, you know, it was overall, I felt very, very safe. Uh, I was in a mask the whole time. So by and large, um, uh, I, I feel fine about it. Social distancing? Any social distancing? None. You know, I thought people would be like in their little pods or little clusters. Yeah. None. No, I mean, I, I was there with my microphone. People are pressing up against me. You know, I got, I got sweat on me. People are breathing on me. I got a little bit of beer being spilled on me. Just like old times. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm sure alcohol factored into this as well. People probably yep. got really comfortable after a few drinks. Absolutely. I I talked to uh, the bartenders, uh, one of the bartenders, Cassidy Gonzalez, who's worked there for over 10 years and has been out of work for this past year because of the shutdown and was thrilled, was thrilled to be back. And, you know, it said, you know, people are feeling pretty good tonight. It's going to be, you know, a a better crowd than most nights. Nobody should be coming down here jaded or, you know, pissed about the fact that they paid X amount to get in. Like... (laughs) I'm sure nobody's ever excited to pay $20 for a cocktail, but if there's ever a night, it might be tonight, right? (laughs) Now, music was the central focus. How was the show, Casey? I mean, it was great. It was the first live show in over a year, and you you could feel that. You could feel there was so much anticipation. Uh, I talked to Chong the Nomad headlining the show, and this was a really big show for her as well. This is the first time I've played a show that I've headlined that's sold out, and that's That's so new to me. I've never had that happen to me before. Um, And I just, I really want to make it count. Strangely enough, I kind of feel calm. As as calm as I could be right now. But um, there was a thing that happened to me pre-pandemic where I'd be like, oh, am I good enough? Am I, is this music going to be like, are are people going to connect with it? Is it, is it something that people are going to leave and remember it by? I don't have those worries tonight. (laughs) If I play like, I don't know, a one hour loop of 2011 dubstep, I'm pretty sure people will be happy just to be in a room dancing (laughs) with other people. Casey, you went to the show. Did you stay to the end? I did. How was the mood afterwards? celebratory you know people they they didn't want to leave you know everybody was just right outside of the club all right where do we go next what's open you know where can we go get some food and every place in capitol hill was just packed Uh, capitol pizza right up the street had people you know eating slices right onto the sidewalk uh and so it was it it felt like for a thursday night it felt like a capitol hill in a full weekend swing Uh, i'm happy to see that return especially to this area in seattle because it's it's the heartbeat you know it's uh, Seeing this place dead on a Saturday night, like mid July, that was heartbreaking, you know? Like, you know, that's that's not what this area is about. Like, I and I grew up, I not grew up, but my formative adult years, I grew uh, were in Capitol Hill. So, 
being able to see it kind of come back to life is really, really special. You know, Casey, I wonder if it's going to be like before, if that's where we are in this thing as we're reopening, that it's just going to be like it was before. Mm hmm. Yeah, I think that there are certain, uh, you know, d- different things that people are being comfortable with that if you want to wear masks, there's certain, you know, hygiene things that people are taking that, you know, if they pull out hand sanitizer, that's completely normal. We didn't really carry around Purell before as much. <laughs> I so did, I think, but. <laughs> okay, yes. <laughs> Smarter people like you did. Smarter people like you did. You know, I eat pizza out on the street. So I, I think that some things, you know, allowing people their own personal space and, you know, uh, th- those kind of things might stick around. But right now, at least in this moment, people are eager to get out for sure. Yeah, it sounds like it was really infectious in that crowd. And, you know, so much of what we're doing right now feels different because we have all been through something. Did you get the sense talking to people that there was an appreciation for this that was different than perhaps pre-COVID? You know, the one thing I asked everybody was, does this tonight, does it feel like the end of the pandemic or does it feel like something else? And everybody said, you know, it, it, it feels like we're turning a corner. It feels like something new that, you know, the world is forever changed and, you know, we're never going to look back. But uh, people felt really excited that things were opening back up and they were hugging and dancing out in live music again. Yeah, perspective is everything, Casey. And right now our perspective looks pretty good getting back out into the world. KUOW reporter Casey Martin, great to talk to you. Thanks a lot. Absolutely. Thank you, Murph. Thanks for listening to Seattle Now. You can find us on Instagram. Give us a follow at Seattle Now Pod. Jason Pagano produced today's show. Our production team is Claire McGrain, Caroline Chamberlain Gomez, and Diana Opong. Matt Jorgensen does our theme music. I'm Patricia Murphy. See you tomorrow.